Hi everyone, welcome to my new video in my Mathematics Essentials series. This video will be on reciprocal trigonometric functions, but before we get on to the reciprocal trigonometric functions, I just wanted to take stock at where we are at in the series. So in my first video, where I basically just give an outline of the topics that I will cover in this series, I showed basically this outline and the topics include some revision and background knowledge to start with, uh, vectors, application of vectors, complex numbers, functions, differentiation, so that's when we're getting into differential calculus, integration is when we'll start doing uh, basically integral calculus, then we'll do sequences and series, and the last topic will be matrices, and you can see that all of these uh, subtopics are written in green font. Okay, where are we in the series? We are still at the revision and background knowledge part of the series, and right now, we are here in the trigonometry review. So I am basically taking all of these topics here to be revision. So I'm assuming that they are revision for you, but I'm still doing them in such a way that someone entirely unfamiliar with these topics can follow along. Okay, that's my aim. Okay, so let's get on to the actual topic of this video. And that topic is reciprocal, reciprocal trigonometric functions. Okay, well, if you've been following along with the video series, you'll definitely know what a trigonometric function is, which means that so long as you understand what reciprocal means in the mathematical context, you will understand what reciprocal trigonometric functions are. Okay, so we have our basic trigonometric functions. We have sine of theta. I don't know what happened to my pen size there, my pencil size, oh. says it's the same size. Let's try again. There we go. So we have sine of theta, okay, cosine of theta, and tan of theta, okay. Now, those are our three basic trigonometric functions. What's a reciprocal? Okay, well, a, recipro a reciprocal is if we have some variable x, okay, or maybe we have some fixed constant a, the reciprocal of x, okay, so I'll say for x, the reciprocal the reciprocal of x is just 1 over x, okay, or well, for, let's say, some fixed constant a, okay, the reciprocal, so I'll just write these uh, quotation marks to say that everything that's being said here is the same as what's being said here, okay, rather than just repeat what I'm writing, all right, the reciprocal of a is 1 over a, okay, what if you had a fraction, okay, for x over y or a over b, okay, the reciprocal of x over y is y over x, okay? You can think of this x here as x over 1, okay, so the reciprocal is just to flip the fraction, to swap the numerator and denominator. Okay, and you can think of this a as a over 1, right? We typically don't write fractions like that because division by 1 does nothing, but the point is that what you get here when you take the reciprocal of something is no different to what you get when you have, when you take the reciprocal of a fraction because you can think of just x and a as fractions. They're just x over 1 and a over 1 respectively. Okay, so that's what reciprocals are. So what would be the reciprocal of sine of theta? Well, the reciprocal of sine of theta 
would be 1 over sine of theta. The reciprocal of the cosine of theta would be 1 over the cosine of theta. And the reciprocal of the tangent of theta would be 1 over the tangent of theta. Okay. Now remember, tan of theta is equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. Okay. So really, this here, okay, 1 over tan of theta, or the reciprocal of tan of theta, would be equal to 1 over the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. Okay. Now, division by a fraction is the same as multiplication by the reciprocal. So in other words, dividing the numerator by the fraction okay, would be the same as taking the reciprocal of this fraction and rather than dividing by this fraction, taking its reciprocal and multiplying it by the numerator. So in other words, this would be the same as 1 times the reciprocal of sine of theta over the cosine of theta, which would just be the cosine of theta over the sine of theta, and that would just equal, because we're just multiplying it by 1, the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. So you can see that 1 over tan just equals cosine over sine, and from tan of theta equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta, you can see that this reciprocal of tan really is the reciprocal, okay? Because tan is sine theta over cosine of theta, so we would expect the reciprocal to be cosine of theta over sine of theta, okay? So, it turns out that these reciprocal trigonometric functions have their own names. So whenever you see in mathematics an equal sign, but with a colon in front of it, okay, often they don't write the colon, uh, but this is what it means if the colon is present, okay, this equal sign with a colon means, you can think of it as, you can read it this way, is defined as, okay, or is equal to by definition, okay. All right. For instance, if you take 2 plus 2 equal to 4, all right, well, the definition of 4 is not 2 plus 2. That just happens to be what 2 plus 2 equals, okay, but that's not what the definition of 4 would be, okay. If you want, like, a precise and rigorous definition for the natural number 4, you have to do some axiomatic set, the axiomatic set theory, excuse me, <clears throat> okay. But when we say things like, uh, you know, sine of theta, equals the opposite side of a right angle triangle, the opposite side to our angle theta over the hypotenuse, okay? See, this is by definition. This is by definition of our right angle triangle definitions of our three basic trigonometric functions. So we would be justified in putting that colon there to say is defined as, okay? So what I'm about to write next to these reciprocal trigonometric functions is equality by definition, okay? It's not by computation, it's by definition. Okay, so 1 over the sine of theta is defined to be, I'll write the whole word first, okay, all right, cosecant, okay, cosecant of theta, okay, just like when we have cos, all right, well, the, the full word is cosine, but we often just say cos because that's how we abbreviate it in mathematical notation, okay, all right, the full word for the reciprocal of sine of theta so the word for this is cosecant. That's the reciprocal of sine. Okay. Now, the mathematical notation varies. There are really two notations. One is this. Cosec of theta. Okay. So you will see that in some textbooks. All right. And other textbooks write this. CSC for cosecant of theta, often we say cosec of theta for short, okay? I'm going to stick with this notation because it's shorter, it's more compact, and mathematicians are lazy. If they can uh, pack more information 
into a smaller amount of variables, they will. Okay, so I'm going to uh, follow the habits of laziness that uh, seem to be ubiquitous amongst mathematicians and write CSC for the cosecant of theta. Okay, now one over the cosine of theta, it also has its own name. Okay, and that is secant. So one over cosine is secant. Okay, the secant of theta and its notation, actually I'll leave cosecant up here. Cosecant. Okay. Okay, so one over the cosine of theta, which is the reciprocal of cosine of theta, is cosecant. Sorry, secant, secant. And its notation is just SEC, sec. Okay, and sometimes we say sec theta, just like we say cos, cos of theta rather than cosine of theta. Okay, sec theta. All right, you can say secant of theta or sec theta for short. Now, 1 over 10 of theta, which is the reciprocal of 10 of theta, well, that is uh, cotangent. That's the full word. Okay, so cotangent. And just like we often say tan instead of tangent, tan is short for tangent, okay, we often just say cotan rather than cotangent. Okay, All right, and the notation for the reciprocal trigonometric function of tan of theta is cot, C-O-T, so cot of theta. Okay, so these are our reciprocal trigonometric functions. And in future videos, I will graph them. And the graphing of those functions those reciprocal trigonometric functions, I can, I can basically explain why those graphs look the way they do much quicker in the videos to come because of the video I made about the graph of the tangent of theta. Okay, so if you can understand what's going on for the graph of the tangent of theta, that will basically expose. If you know if it's entirely new to you, that will expose you to a bunch of concepts that will make it easier to interpret the graphs of these reciprocal trigonometric functions. So just to summarize what I've done in this video, okay, uh, I showed you basically or explained where we are, like how far we've progressed in this series. We're we are still in the, uh, the revision topics and specifically uh, the trigonometry revision topic, okay, and in this video I covered the reciprocal trigonometric function. So the reciprocal of sine of theta is cosec of theta. The reciprocal of cos of theta is sec theta. The reciprocal of tan of theta is cot of theta or cotan of theta. Now, it can get a bit tricky to remember which ones are which. Okay, so maybe you see CSC of theta, like cosec of theta, and you're like, oh gosh, which one is that? Is that one over sine or one over cos? Okay, it doesn't have a T in it, so it's obviously not the reciprocal of tan of theta, it's not cotan of theta. Okay, but it can be difficult to remember which one is which. Alright, so here is just a handy mnemonic device. Imagine each of them, sorry, I'll change color, that doesn't show up very nice. Imagine each of them are uh, written, in fact, I'll write these again, okay, written out in full. Okay, so cosecant, C-O, I'm going to write the S in red, okay? Cosecant, okay, and you'll see what I'm getting at here. Now I'll write secant, and I'll write the C in red, secant. This is like a handy way to remember which one is which. And then for cotangent, C-O, and I'll write the T in red, cotangent, okay? So if you remember what the full names of these reciprocal trigonometric functions are, and you just consider what the third letter is, then that will provide a hint as to which reciprocal trigonometric function it is. So if you see cosecant and you're wondering whether it's 1 over sine of theta or 1 over cos of theta, well, look at the third letter 
And you will see that since the third letter is an S, okay, we're dealing with 1 over the sine of theta. Okay? When you look at cosecant, and you see that the third letter is a C, that will remind you that the secant function is 1 over cos, 1 over cosine. And when you look at cotangent, I think this one should be straightforward enough because it has the word tangent in it, but the pattern still holds. The third letter indicates that we are talking about the reciprocal trigonometric function for tan of theta, which is cotangent. Okay? So don't do this. Don't look at the abbreviated notation, the mathematical notation, all right, to try and remind yourself, because that will lead you astray, because you'll see that the third letter of, for the notation for cosecant is a C, all right, and that might make you think that you're talking about 1 over cos, but you're not, you're talking about 1 over sine, okay? So always go with the, the full names if you want to employ this uh, helpful trick to remember which reciprocal trigonometric functions correspond to which trigonometric function. Okay, so that's about it for now. In the next video, I think what I'll do is I will graph this function. I will graph cosec of theta. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a like, uh, share it with your friends if you wish, and if you would like a notification when I upload a new video, subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye for now.